Hey all, uh, today I'm going to talk about everything that we've learned about series, putting it all together. In particular, I want to talk about starting with some series. I'll write it as the sum k equals something to infinity of a k. I'm going to put a question mark here because sometimes it's one, sometimes it's zero, sometimes it's a different number, and it all works the same. So I'm going to stretch you a little bit by leaving that unknown. So if you open up a problem set and see a series, and if I ask you to decide, is it absolutely convergent, conditionally convergent, or divergent? Those are the three possibilities. Here's a kind of process for how to start that. Of course, if I just ask, is it convergent, you don't have to worry about the distinction between absolute and conditional, but let's assume for now that you do. The first thing you want to do when you're looking at a series is try the easy stuff. So there are three kind of easy possibilities, the divergence test, or it could be a P-series or a geometric series. The diver divergence test, all you do is you take the limit as k goes to infinity of the terms, the things inside the sum, or you can take their absolute value. If you see a minus one to the k in there and it's making you nervous, it's hard to see what the limit is, you can throw away the minus one to the k because we're looking, we can just look at the absolute value. It works just as well. So if the limit does anything other than converge to zero, that means if it converges to a number that is not zero, or if it doesn't converge, then the series diverges. Okay, done. Nothing else to say. You've decided everything there is to say about the series. However, if that limit the, the terms or the absolute value equals zero, it tells you nothing. That's what's going to happen most of the time. Um, in that case, if you're lucky, you may recognize it as a known series. It could be a p-series. You can recognize a p-series because you see the index k raised to some positive number, or 1 over it raised to some positive number. If you see that, or if you see the index raised to a negative number, then it's a p-series, and right away you know if that positive number is bigger than one, the series converges absolutely. If it is less than or equal to one, the series diverges. Equal to one is the special case that we call the harmonic series because it's just one that comes up a lot and deserves its own name. Um, other easy possibility is it could be a geometric series. If you recognize that it's some number, times another number raised to the index. That's a geometric series. If the number being raised to the index is between one and minus one, not counting one and minus one itself, then the series converges absolutely. Again, you're done. If it's more than one or less than negative one or equal to one or negative one, the series diverges. All of that, end of story. More typically, you're gonna get a complicated series that doesn't fit any of those patterns, but that the terms converge to zero. In that case, you first need to decide if it's absolutely convergent, which means that you need to look at the absolute value. Remember, when you take the absolute value of the terms, anytime you're multiplying things, the absolute value of a product or of a fraction is the product or fraction of the absolute values. The absolute value of minus one to the n is just one. The absolute value of minus two to the n is two to the n, absolute value of n squared, uh, log of n, if n is at least one. Most other simple formulas are just themselves. Okay, um, there's a lot of tests to tell if the positive version converges, but, and of course it's possible that the positive version was a, satisfies the divergence test or is a p-series or a geometric series. Um, but usually, you're either going to have to do the limit comparison test or the ratio test. Here's how you decide. If everything, if you're adding together a bunch of things and each thing is either k to a power or, or some, some polynomial in k to a power, anything like that, or an exponential, something like 2 to the k or 3 to the k, uh, then you're going to use the limit comparison theorem. If you see factorials 
or products of powers of k um, with exponentials. So if you see mixed things like k squared times 3 to the k, you're going to have to use the ratio test. If all you see is powers of k, polynomials in k, square roots, things like that, you have to use a limit comparison test. There's a lot of things where you can use either. So the limit comparison test. First, you take the individual terms a, k, you simplify them by throwing away lower order terms. You keep doing that until you've basically got one term on the top and one term on the bottom. And usually they cancel out to something really simple like one over k to the p or um, some number to the k. So usually the simplified version will look like a um, p series or a geometric series, and then you're golden. Um, if it looks like something more complicated, probably limit comparison theorem won't work. Um, so the check here, the thing you have to check to make sure it works, is that the limit of the ratio a k over b k equals one. Technically speaking, it can be anything other than zero. But the way we write our simplified b k, it's always going to be one. And then once you've done that check, if the simplified series converges, then the series converges. And if the simplified series diverges, the series diverges. So if you can tell what the simplified series does, you're done. You're going to answer everything. Um, everything about the absolute value. The ratio test, you look at this expression, the limit as k goes to infinity of the absolute value of this ratio. On the bottom, you put the individual term a k, and on the top, you put the next term, which is the same expression with every k replaced with k plus one. Usually you wanna put the k plus one in parentheses. You take this limit, it's usually not that hard, and if it is less than one, the series converges absolutely, all done. If it is greater than one, the series diverges. If it's a positive series, then um, you may have to check that its um, alternating version converges. And then, sadly, if the limit is equal to one, the test tells you nothing. And as I said, if all you've got is polynomial square roots and expressions like that, it's going to equal one. If neither of those work, then you got to pull out the big guns. Two big guns that we know, the integral test. Um, in the integral test, you replace the terms a, k, which is some formula that has k's in it, with the same formula with x's in it. You turn it into a function of real numbers. Usually that's totally straightforward. And then here's the check. The check is, that f of x, that function you turn it into, has to be a positive decreasing function. So if you graph it, it should be above the x-axis and heading down towards the x-axis. As always, we only need this to be true eventually. That is, when x is bigger than some number. So if there's a wobble or two first, if it ducks down below the x-axis, but then finally comes up, hits a peak, and then heads down, then you're happy. Okay, once you've done the check, if the integral converges, then the series converges absolutely. If the integral diverges, then the series diverges. Remember, an integral converging means that it is, um, uh, that you get a finite number out for the integral. And then if that doesn't work, you gotta try the comparison test. The comparison test requires a lot of of subtle imagination. The key is to identify a comparison series, BK, but now it's not just sim the simplified version of AK. Um, you need, you always need AK to be positive and BK to be positive for this to work, but there's different checks in the two different cases. Um, if every term eventually of AK is less than or equal to the corresponding term of BK. So if BK is a bigger sequence than if BK converges the series, then the series AK converges absolutely. On the other hand, if you manage to set it up so that BK is smaller, eventually smaller than each term AK, and 
the sum of BK diverges, then the sum of the AK diverges. Okay, so if you're looking at AK, you got to think of a bigger thing that converges or a smaller thing that diverges. And that's pretty tricky. I will not generally ask you to think that up. However, I may suggest to you BK and ask you to go through the comparison test. Um, okay, that's how we can tell if something's absolutely convergent. If the series is absolutely convergent, if it absolute value converges, you're done. If the absolute value diverges, then your original series could be conditionally convergent or divergent, okay? The only tool we have to tell that is the alternating series test. Um, so if your series is alternating, um, and if its positive version is decreasing, both of these are eventually, that is after the first few terms, if you've got an alternating series whose absolute values are decreasing, then if the limit of the individual positive terms goes to zero, the series converges. And if it doesn't go to zero, the series diverges. I put the second fact here under alternating series, but I'm just repeating the divergence theorem. Okay. The divergence theorem says that if this, this sequence goes to zero, do, doesn't go to zero, the series diverges. Um, so I'm just reminding you of it here. Okay, so that means if the absolute value, you really, generally you just want to use the alternating series test if you've already checked the absolute value diverges. So in that case, if it comes out positive, then it is conditionally convergent. Okay, uh, last thing I wanna tell you about, remind you of very briefly is, in addition to learning when a series converged, we also learned how fast. That is, we learned how to estimate the error. Um, remember the error is the absolute value of S minus SN, where S is the infinite sum that you wanna estimate, and SN is a finite sum that you hope is close to it. So you want this error, S minus SN, to be as small as possible. Two cases where we can control it is if your series passes the integral test. Doesn't matter if that's what you use to show it converged. If it is does in fact pass the integral test, then the error is bounded by, this should be an X, I'm sorry. Um, uh, sorry, this is just totally wrong. It's the integral from N plus one to infinity. I will fix that in the notes. Uh, you go one further than where your series cut off, right? If you cut it off at n, you start at n plus 1. And that integral, which we're assuming we know how to do and is finite because the integral test was passed, that integral overestimates the error. And finally, if your series happens to be an alternating series and passes the alternating series test with the positive values decreasing um, and going to zero, then the error S minus SN is just less than the absolute value of the next term. Okay, it's always kind of the next term here. Okay, those are the two estimates. We'll learn more estimates, a more general estimate in not too long, uh, but that is, everything that we are going to learn about the question of whether a series converges or not and whether it converges absolutely. See you next time.